you very much. The story involves a legal and political battle in New York State with national implications. It began with a murder last week. NBC's Ron Allen explains. On one side is a district attorney, Robert Johnson, who has serious doubts about capital punishment. On the other is a governor, George Pataki, who campaigned for the death penalty and then signed the bill into law with a murdered cop's pen. And it's the case of another murdered cop, 33-year-old Kevin Gillespie, who has brought the issue front and center. Three men with violent pasts are in jail. The alleged trigger man could face the death penalty if convicted. I've gotten ultimatums and deadlines. I don't feel pressure. Um, I, I, I answer to my conscience. Johnson's conscience tells him the death penalty is not a deterrent, that it's costly and difficult to win. And he'll never forget a case when he won a murder conviction, and then the brother of the convicted murderer stepped forward and confessed. Johnson's reluctance to seek the death penalty is wearing on the governor's patience, who has publicly said the Gillespie killing bears all the hallmarks of a death penalty case. He wants to make that case an example, and he may try to make an example of the Bronx DA as well. Uh, we cannot have uh, any elected official uh, who is charged with enforcing the law say that because they have a political objection to the death penalty that they won't enforce it. Johnson has only said there is a slight possibility that he will ever seek the death penalty in a murder case. The law gives the DA several months to decide how he'll prosecute the cop killers, but the governor may force the issue take the rare step of appointing a special prosecutor and essentially try to kick the DA off the case. For today, Ron Allen, NBC News, New York. And joining us now, Robert Johnson, the Bronx District Attorney, whose decision it will be whether to seek the death penalty in this case, and New York Governor George Pataki. They have agreed to appear together. They do not wish to debate here on our air. Mr. Johnson, then let me start with you. You're in a tough spot. You're the district attorney in a high crime area of a state that has adopted the death penalty. You have the murder of a police officer on your hands. You're not in favor of the death penalty. Are you the wrong man for this job? Well, I think you've mischaracterized it. I'm not opposed to the death penalty. I've never spoken out against the death penalty. Uh, I've spoken about how we're going to weigh the options. And it is not a death penalty. I think you've mischaracterized that also. The law is that um, a person who commits a murder in the first degree is subject to life without parole unless the district attorney files to seek the death penalty. So there are two options here, and it's up to the district attorney according to the law signed by the governor. So you're saying it's up to your discretion to seek the death penalty. You in the past have said that generally you are opposed to the death penalty. Not a, I haven't said that I'm opposed to the death penalty. This is a mischaracterization that I think keeps coming out to try and make the case to have the governor remove me from, from this case. What I've said is that in each and every death penalty case, there are the same very serious grave concerns that I have. That is that it's uncertain that you're going to get it, that you're going to win a conviction, and that you're going to ha have the imposition of the penalty, that it's a lengthy and costly uh, and complex process, that it's been tied to race in the states that have it. The, the white victims, it's been used more often for white victims, that um, judges and, and district attorneys have been subject to political pressure in those states that in those states it's not been shown to be a deterrent to crime. Let me try from and, this and angle And that then. it's irrevocable in spite of the fact that mistakes can be made. Let me try from this angle. What message do you think you send if you don't go for the death penalty in the murder of a police officer in this state? Well, I think you have to look at the complete criminal justice message that we send. Should that be the case, and we have not decided what we're going to do in the Gillespie case, but should that be the case, you have to look at what we do in criminal justice. In the Bronx, we send 10% more of our convicted felons to state prison than as a statewide average. And should we send a police murderer to jail for the rest of his natural life, that is not sending a soft on crime message because, as I've indicated, the death penalty has not been shown to be a deterrent. So you get the same value. You get the punishment, you get the prevention, and you don't deal with all the, the, uh, the risks, the complications, the cost. Uh, it, it, it's... It's something that hasn't been decided, but there's a very, very heavy mountain of data. And the governor's tried to characterize it as my moral beliefs, my personal beliefs. This is real. The, the, Do you the, think the, Governor the Pataki the, has a right to intercede well, in this I, case? Well, I, I think there's a statute that says that he can appoint a special, a special district attorney. But I, I think it has not been used in a case such as this. And I think the courts, where there is a statute that says the district attorney has a discretion to seek life without parole or death are going to be very loath to permit the governor 
to disenfranchise the voters of, of my county. Governor, let me, let me go to you then. What's wrong with this? I mean, here's a guy who won't rush to call for the death penalty. He's strong and independent-minded. Don't we need someone like this to counterbalance a life and death decision? Matt, what we need is an equal application of the law across the state. The death penalty is now the law of the state of New York. The but people it's not have mandatory. Spoken, uh, it's not mandatory, but you have to exercise your discretion in a professional way based on the facts. And it's clear in this case, the murder of a police officer in the line of duty by someone with a record of violent felony con convictions, that's exactly the type of crime that death penalty was aimed at punishing. You helped pass this law. Yes, Part of the I did. statute, as I understand, says that the district attorney has 120 days from the time of indictment to make a decision. Why are you rushing, Mr. Johnson? Because of the comments of Mr. Johnson, and I'd just like to quote what he said. He said that it was his present intention, quote, not to utilize the death penalty provision of the statute. We cannot have that. We cannot have the death penalty as the law in New York State for the killing of a police officer except in the Bronx. We cannot have a different standard of justice. And uh, the district attorney has indicated he might sue me in the event that I uh, take the step to re replace him in the Gillespie case. But I know that I will be sued by, by defendants facing the death penalty other, in other parts of the states uh, if we don't do this because they will say that the law doesn't apply apply equally and fairly across the state. You ran for office as a strong advocate of the death penalty. Has this now just become a case of credibility for you? Not at all. It's a, it's a question of enforcing the law. It's a question of seeking justice. The law, the death penalty, is now the law of the state. It's aimed at cases such as the, the murder of a police officer in the line of duty. And I have an obligation as governor to see that the law is enforced across the state, particularly when someone, because of a personal, uh, philosophic, or political uh, position, uh, refuses to enforce the law. Let, let me address something you said there, because I think, Mr. Johnson, if you two were a debate, would, would have some cause to complain about something you said. It's not the law of the state in that it's mandatory. The law allows the discretion of the district attorney. Why will you force him to do something then that the legislature, in its wisdom, won't? Because it's clear that the district attorney has said that he will not utilize the provision of the death penalty statute. We asked the specific question, is there a case in the Bronx County where you will seek the death penalty? We were unable to get an answer from the district attorney saying yes to that question. The death of a police officer, the murder of a police officer, such as Kevin Gillespie in the line of duty, is exactly the type of case the death penalty was aimed at. And, and Matt, if I might, I've gotten calls from other district attorneys in the state uh, saying that they have death penalty cases where they are weighing whether or not to seek the death penalty. Uh, and they're very concerned that in the case of a murder of a police officer, if there's a county where they do not seek the death penalty, that the highest court, when it's reviewing the fairness of the statute will say that that their standard of justice is different. I'll give you we each 10 seconds here. Mr. Johnson, you two can't see eye to eye on this subject. Can you coexist in your positions? Certainly, because um, the governor has to make a decision whether he's going to supersede. I would hope that he does not. He doesn't belong in this. My county re-elected me after I stated my position. But if he does, then, then either I will step aside or the courts will decide. Will you supersede? Will you jump in? Uh, we'll make the determination very shortly, but I believe the death penalty is the law of the state and has to be applied fairly and equally all across the state. Governor Pataki, Mr. Johnson, thank you both. Thank you. Okay. It's now 717. Once again, here's Katie. Thank you, Matt. If you've been following the presidential campaign,